this is just a disclaimer and sort of warning about this podcast. The Activity Continues podcast is in no way affiliated with The Dead Files, its production company, or any of its distributors. We are simply fans that love the show and love to talk about it and dissect it and yes, make fun of it, but we do love it. And all of the opinions expressed herein are ours alone and have nothing to do with The Dead Files or any of its cast, crew, production, or distributors. And we swear. Enjoy. In the prohibition years of Minneapolis, Minnesota, there was an underworld. Gangs of bootleggers, bandits, sluggers, and murderers roamed the streets and conducted their business. One of the most legendary figures of that time was Isidore Blumenfeld, also known as Kid Can. He began as a newsboy and grew into the most notorious gangster Minneapolis has to offer, and either a psychopath or the nicest guy ever, depending on who you ask. Volsteadland explores this world. Join me, Amy, and my co-host, Heather, as we journey through this era of prohibition, bank robberies, empty promises, and murder. Fam, Amy here. Welcome to The Activity Continues, a podcast where three soul friends talk about all things paranormal. Ghosts, hauntings, psychics, movies and TV shows, especially The Dead Files, and other spooky and spooky adjacent things as well. We also like to interview people in the paranormal community, as well as past Dead Files clients and other interesting people. Sometimes we even tell your stories. We hope you enjoy the show. Are, Are we, we saying say hello? hello? Oh, should we go five, four, three, two, one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello. hello. Welcome, Ghosty fam. Thanks for joining us again. This week, we're continuing our spring break series called Ghosts Gone Wild. This is week five, so only one more left of these warm locations. This episode is one that Amy chose, so she can tell us more about it. Hello, everyone. This one's called Deadly Force, and it is season 11, episode 13. Takes place in the Florida Everglades and actually the town called Davie, Florida. The original air date, October 3rd, 2019. And the synopsis on the Travel Channel is Amy and Steve head down to the Florida Everglades to meet with a Reiki master who claims her family is being torn apart by violent paranormal attacks she is worried if steve and amy can't help someone's going to wind up hurt or even dead dun, dun, dun. and i will say this we all noticed that there were a lot of very common reusable yes uh sayings that they use a lot uh over mm-hmm. and over and over again this one was full of them mm-hmm. so much <laughs> yeah so if you want to play a drinking game this would yeah. be a good one yeah to do we're- it too it, or not, sure. you might die. I mean, <laughs> I mean, small sips. Yeah, don't the, chug a drink. Yeah, You'll literally die because yeah. there were so many. But. There were so many. Obviously, you two never did power hour in college. No, what's that? <laughs> oh yeah, I did, but I'm. <laughs> you 40 didn't do now. shots. You did. You did 
chugs of chugs beer of or drinks, whatever, yeah. whatever you had. But it's yeah, they oh. play a s- song countdown, and then every time it came up as a the whatever mm-hmm. it was, we ours was Darude Sandstorm. So you just chug it to the to the chorus of Sandstorm. Just finish your drink, and then you had to have a couple ready. So that you would finish one and just pick up another one, finish that one, pick up another one. Oh, How are we still alive? That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, well, you had okay. to start we, early. We want to go with how we're still alive. Uh, let me paint a picture for you. <laughs> picture it. It's like 2008, 2009, even before that, mm-hmm. between 2004 and 2009. We're at a house that is called the Hockey House, which then turns into the Lacrosse House. Mm. And the basement is not much better than a dirt floor. Nope. The lacrosse boys put in a stripper pole at one point and there was a platform, whatever. It just had loud parties with DJs and, yes. you know, everybody. This is like every there. college house yep. ever. Yeah. Floor, shoes are sticking to it. This is where we played beer pong. And this is where we didn't use water in the cups. We actually had beer in the cups and we use water to wash off the ping pong ball <laughs> because that was going to save us. It was so unhygienic. <laughs> it was, but we would, we would play with it. You'd roll, it would roll off the table. You'd find it underneath somebody's shoe. It'd be sticky. You're rinsing it in and you're hanging it off there. And then you're throwing it back across and still drinking when mm-hmm. there's stuff floating in your beer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. We had the swimmer's house in, in Stevens Point. We went to the swimmer's house. That was our big thing. Um, I met a lot of Steves there. <laughs> a lot of Steves, I swear. Brads I, and Chads? No Brads and no Chads. Lots oh. of Steves. Lot like I swear every person I met was named Steve. Oh, that's so funny. Mm. And then I don't remember. And then you, oh my God, I just, we could go on about... <laughs> To That's this day, episode on how we got through college. On how we got through college. <laughs> so one of the one of the girls I was friends with, she knew people who threw like the best parties, and so we went to one called GI Joe's and corp. No CEOs and corporate hoes. Mm, and mm-hmm, so, yep. um, like I a wore just party. like a pantsuit with a bra and just a a suit jacket because yep. I thought I I was thinner then, and I you know. To this day, I cannot drink any brown because I took a shot of brown be- um, liquor, instantly threw it all up. So <gasps> Really? <sighs> First wow. shots I w- did really was before Christmas one year when it was all the finals and everything. Mm-hmm. We were at Hockey Girl's house mm-hmm. and we were getting ready to go out. And It was always some we were- sport. Oh yeah, hockey I, house, well, I played, swimmer I, house, lacrosse house. I played sports, so I was always with that group of people. Oh, I wasn't. And we, I mean, I didn't play. We sports were sitting anyways, at a but. table playing games, and everybody was kind of leaving to go out, uh, other places. And I was still sitting there with a couple ladies, and guy sits down and has a bottle of black cherry Smirnoff. Ooh, oh. Ooh, oh. yep. I got gut rot just hearing those. Yep. Sounds awful. Black cherry Smirnoff vodka. And he sets it down on the table. He's like, I'm driving tonight, so I can't drink this. So what does our brilliant brain say? We'll drink well, it. We got to drink it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Someone's got to drink it. So we played games. And the, uh, I mean, there was shots going so quickly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I do remember th- that night, which is crazy. But it That's was amazing. Like, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> I remember going out uh, after Christmas and we were going hunting with my dad and my brother. We were headed out west to go pheasant hunting. And I had a sore throat, so I had to, I had to use the chloroseptic, which is cherry flavored. Oh, oh my god! Yeah. I just about puked right back into the like, anything black cherry for a long time. Uh, no, nope. oh, thank you. It's amazing. Uh, Anyways, it's amazing. I, the the point is, it's amazing <laughs> we survived college yeah. with the antics we did. Yeah, it is. So. It is. All right, we got some content warnings, <laughs> yes. people. Content warning. So deep depression, we have a murder, we have a suicide, graphic nightmares, inappropriate ghostly behavior. Um, Childhood cancer. Oh, yeah. Childhood cancer. Kind of a big one. Yeah. Sorry. (laughs) So. I mean, she's fine. She came. She's fine. She lived. She's the Reiki master. Yeah. Um, So she's living her best life. But yeah, she did have childhood cancer. And let's see. Okay, so as as AP said, there's one more 
uh, episode in the spring break series, but we do have some other fun things lined up. We've got some exciting interviews. Uh, we are bringing back Leah, the shaman. Mm-hmm. And she went on this really amazing vacation to yes. Thailand. And she started China, in the UK. I think. Was it UK? Yeah, yeah. she started She's all over. I mean, it was an amazing, it was a very long, I think, an amazing trip. I we mm-hmm. all follow her on Facebook mm-hmm. and saw all her pictures and they look so They're beautiful. Beautiful. And, Just and she's beautiful. She's talking about. Like, you know, I don't know, a lot of you listening probably are following Cindy Kaza, and she recently went on a trip like this, where she just went and, like, learned from the natives about, like, how their spirituality is and all that kind of stuff. And it seems to me that this, uh, I, I think this is what Leah did, and um, because she, it seems like she came away with a lot of new ideas and mm-hmm. So, so I asked her if she would like to come on and talk to us about that. She said she'd be happy to. And she had a lot of really great stories to share, she said. So awesome. we're going to be meeting with her in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. And then that will be um, one of our first interviews back back in the interview realm. And then we have at least two clients potentially, potentially lined up. One is interested. I just right now she's in the stage of listening to us our other mm-hmm. episodes to find mm-hmm. out if she wants to or not. That's fair. And I haven't heard yet. So we're not everyone's cup of tea. We're not everyone's cup of tea. And that's why I always say, you know, right. go ahead and listen, listen to us first. Yeah. And if you like us, then we'll like you and you will have a great time. Yeah. And if you don't if like you us, don't like, that's fine. That's fine. Yep. No harm, no harm, no fall. Yep. So there is one that is in that process. And then the other, I just found the other day, and uh, she is interested. I don't know if she has listened to us yet, but we've been chatting a lot. And she's super cool. So not going to say who they are, but those are in the works. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Pretty sure they'll both happen. But and then we're also going to bring Zoe back. Zoe is our patron and friend who uh, was uh, we brought her on once before to tell. Yep. Some uh, cryptid stories. Mm-hmm. And, yes, and she had own. some really good experiences. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she did. And she is, a, I don't know if she is, considers herself a medium. Does she? Do you know? Either of you? Um, I don't know if she does. She is a tarot card reader. She's yep. pagan. I think she's a witch. I think she says she's a witch. Um, she's definitely she, super sensitive because yes. she has done readings for yes. me. And Amy. Yes. I did she it. I, and I were talking. Tarot. Yeah. And she's like, I need to do you a reading for you. And I'm like, yes, you yeah. really do. Yeah, you should. You should do you one with her. You just got to schedule she's it really. with her. I know. I know. I yeah. do. Yeah. So she's going to be on again and uh, talking about how she does that. And and yeah, I know she sees spirits and she talks to spirits. She found, um, I, I had posted a picture of, we did a house concert at my house and uh, Melissa, our, our mm-hmm. composer of our intro. And did a house concert at our house and I took a bunch of pictures and I put them on Facebook. And so he's like, um, that one picture of the, this one part of your house, there's a little girl there. And yeah. she said, she talked to the little girl and the little girl likes my house because of the dogs. She likes to come and play with the dogs and she likes that it's peaceful and calm. And I'm like, really? <laughs> Is she in, okay. in the right house? <laughs> <laughs> but so I know she sees spirits and can talk to spirits and stuff like that. I just don't know if she considers herself a medium or not. Yeah, but, I don't know if she does either. But at, at any rate, she will be back. And then uh, the last little housekeeping thing. Is, two things left. Oh, yep. There's two. You're right. As Megan mentioned, uh, <laughs> if you want to play along a little drinking game with this episode because there's a lot of these repetitive phrases and things because there's so many and we realize that there are so many in all the episodes that we are going to design a little bingo game. And by the time this is out, we will or have drinking. I mean, you. Up. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, you can drink every time you get a, a, a piece on the bingo <laughs> card. Or just or dot it just... if you're a non-drinker. Yeah. Either or way. put stickers or yep. color it in or whatever, yep. whatever your you little wanted. heart desires. That's it right. is your bingo card. That's right. So we'll we'll get that and that'll be mm-hmm. up and ready for you by the time this airs. And then the last thing is I want to invite everybody to come on over to the Dead Files group, the Facebook group that uh, we have talked about. There's a couple different groups and there was one that was a hot mess for a while and we were kind of making fun of it. Mm-hmm. Um, this one is pretty good now. There are the uh it's, it's very big there's like seventy five thousand people there's a group. lot of people in it yeah but but it's um, good 
It is good. There are lots of discussions, really lots discussions. about the shows and yep. about other paranormal stuff, other paranormal shows. Yeah. It used to be just Dead Files. And now that the Dead Files is sadly probably not coming back. Um, is it sad? It's, <laughs> it's sad because we like the show. Yeah. I can't and imagine like it Cindy. actually uh, being successful again. But whatever. No. What do I know? And it's not because of Cindy or be, not mm-hmm. because of Amy. It's just... No. No, it's just things have changed. Yeah. Whatever. So um, this Dead Files group is morphing into more of a like all things paranormal. And mm-hmm. here we if we want to talk about our experiences and has anybody had premonitions and things like that. So I'll put the sh- uh, link in the show notes. I urge you all to come on over and join the party. It's real fun over there. And um, I think that's probably all I have. Either of you have anything else you want to bring up? Nope. Nope. Okay. Well, let's. Get her done. All right. So since this is the one that I chose, I wrote the overview for it. Cue the music. Tonight, we are traveling to Davie, Florida, which is in the Everglades. The client is Krista, who happens to be a Reiki master. She lives in this house with her mom, Michelle, and her father, Michael, or Mike. Her brother, also named Michael, and his fiance, Kara. But Michael and Kara do not stay in the house. They are in an RV that is on the property. And we'll talk more about that later. But basically, he can't stay in the house. Because of the activity. Right, right. They have been experiencing crippling anxiety, depression, brain fog, hearing voices, doppelgangers, nightmares, apparitions, and being touched. Steve first rules out some random animals. Then he gets to investigating and he finds out about a man who owned a lot of land, including the clients. And he led a really interesting life. And we also learn of a murder-suicide that seems like it should have been more a part of this whole picture, or at least talked about a lot more, but Mm -hmm. we'll get into that again, too, a little bit later. Uh, Amy meets two ghosts who seem to connect well with Steve's findings. One is pretty scary, and honestly, she is being highly inappropriate with one of the living people and downright evil with another. We see two sketches, one terrifying, and then on to the reveal. And this is where we learn who these ghosts are and how to get rid of them. Amy gives them some advice. They say they're going to do everything she says, but will they? Stay tuned to see if the activity continues. Unleash the power of stories anywhere, anytime with Audible. Immerse yourself in gripping stories, insightful knowledge, and captivating characters anytime, anywhere. Audible is your library on the go. With hundreds of thousands of titles across every genre, there's a world of reading waiting for your ears. Listen while you cook, clean, or commute. Free your eyes to conquer your day, all while feeding your mind. Start your 30-day free trial today and discover the joy of listening. Go to audibletrial.com slash TAC. That stands for The Activity Continues. With your free 30-day trial, you get one credit, two credits if you're a Prime member, good for any premium selection titles you like, yours to keep. You get the Audible Plus catalog of podcasts, audiobooks, guided wellness, and Audible originals. Listen all you want, no credits needed. Again, that is audibletrial.com slash TAC. Hey everyone, we want to welcome our new sponsor, Gobble. As you know, life can get pretty hectic. Between work, errands, and family time, who always has the energy to plan, shop for, and cook delicious meals every night? That's where Gobble comes in. It's a meal kit service that takes the stress and guesswork out of dinner. I used to dread the what's for dinner question every night. Gobble has been a game changer. They deliver fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and easy-to-follow recipe cards right to your door. Exactly. No more last-minute grocery runs or scrambling for inspiration. Plus, the recipes are incredibly diverse. From healthy options to comfort food classics, there's something for everyone. And let's not forget that cooking together can be a fun family activity. Gobble's recipes are simple enough to involve everyone in the kitchen, even the little ones. So if you're looking for a way to make delicious, stress-free meals that the whole family will love, head over to the link in the show notes or on our website to get your first six meals for $36. Gobble. Gobble. Make dinner amazing. They do refer to her brother as Michael Anthony. I thought it was Anthony. I wasn't yep. sure. Yep. I was going to so, write so, that. I didn't write it down, but I was going to go back and check. But then I thought, yeah. oh, someone will tell me. 
because the, the family kept going back to calling. They put Mike in the screen, but the family kept calling him yeah. Michael. And then that was the dad. Yeah. And then the son is Michael Anthony. And so that was their designation. So that's where I got confused. Yeah. I'm like, why did they use Mike if everybody else just calls him yeah, Michael? That is weird. Maybe yeah. the crew called him that to not be confusing. I don't know. But anyway, so I will say that one of the first things that Steve says is as he's explaining to us what's going on. If Amy and I can't find a way to stop it, someone's going to get seriously hurt. So that's going on the bingo card. Yeah. One. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Matt had to remove, remove a lot of artwork and religious symbols. Mm-hmm. But, but once um, he's done, it'll be ready for tonight's walk. That's right. <laughs> that's right. But, uh, Amy says there's too much death in this little place. Mm-hmm. There's hate, sadness, and loss, and some kind of religion here. Then she hears witchcraft and don't go in there. Yep. yep. Um, Krista thinks that it could kill someone. Krista looks like she's 15. She looks so young. She looks and so young. Like when she's on camera talking to Steve or, or whoever, she doesn't seem that young. But when you look at like pictures of her, she looks very young. I don't know how old she I don't, yeah, was she's, there, but she's like, she's adult, I think. Mm-hmm. Because at one point, Steve says, I mean, you're all adults. Why don't you just move out? I feel like she's probably in her like early 20s. Yeah. She's probably she just looks so something. young. Girl, yeah. what's your skincare? I know. She's just so cute, too. That whole yeah, family is really The pretty. whole family is just adorable. Yeah, they are. The ones we see. Right. Um. So uh, she thinks she shows a picture of mom, dad, her brother, and his fiance. They live in the RV. And Steve asks why they don't just get their own place. And she says she doesn't feel right leaving her parents to deal with this alone. Mm-hmm. And she's worried about them. Yeah. And the animals yep. have been affected. They have, they're basically on a little well, farm, aren't they? I think it's a hobby farm because they talk about like neighbors. But before that, Krista, Steve asks, what if Amy tells you you have to mm. move out? Yeah. And Krista goes, mom would be devastated. It's our dream property. Oh, yep. The other, the dream home. It's our dream and home. And they're going to fight this go. together. <laughs> yep. yep so we got look at that we're in Two five minutes yeah. in we've had we three are, total we got three someone's getting but a big yeah, when he, yep. when they start calling out the animals Steve goes well you got roosters and goats I'm like I think he means chickens because <laughs> chicken is the animal rooster and hen are right. the male and female versions Steve of those to understand or to know the difference <laughs> well because he probably saw that they have the, the red mm-hmm. on top yeah. and most people think that that's all roosters mm. and it's not always. Okay. But I, I I did put down a comment because they were talking and they didn't give us a lot about like, well, are the dogs affected? Mm-hmm. And, you know, it says, yeah, we have a new dog. Right. How new? We don't know. How old? We don't know. Is this a rescue? Does it like there's a lot of what yeah. ifs because they talk about, well, the dog stands at the end of the hallway and barks and then acts like something grabbed her. And I'm like. Yes, I believe there's some stuff going on here. Obviously, there's definitely stuff going yeah. on. But if you've ever had an animal that has had just gets woken up even or something yeah. like that or just kind of stares off, there could be a lot of things that go yeah. into that. Mm-hmm. So there I just there wasn't enough information there for my right. for your liking. For my liking on dogs. <laughs> uh just the other day we were sitting there watching TV and Digby, our our middle dog, was sitting on the floor like between us and the TV. And he suddenly jumped up and looked at his, like looked behind him and then ran in the other room. <laughs> and I'm like, did a ghost goose you? And Maybe I, the little girl pet farted. his butt. Did he fart? He probably just farted. Oh, I mean, that's, himself. Yeah, he scared himself. Yep. Poor Digby. That's, not the first time that's happened. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> he's such a gentleman. He's not used to farting. <laughs> he's like, I don't fart. That could have been That me. is not me. And then no, he looked sir. like Greg and he's like, I cannot <laughs> believe you. And then he left. Yeah. It's not the the husband blaming the dog for the farting. It's the other way around. It's the dog blaming yeah, the husband. Obviously. It is you, life. sir, are disgusting. <laughs> then he trots off here. with his tail up and yeah. just you can just feel the disdain rolling off of Digby. <laughs> if any dog, one of your dogs is going to have disdain, it's for sure going to be Digby. Yeah. Yeah. Digby's the one that sits fancy. As soon as he sits down the foot. The one foot goes over the other. Yep. Yep. Vivian just judges everyone. Yeah. And yells at them. Gracie wants to be your friend. Yeah. And poor. And poor Fozzie Fozzie just walks around on. banging into shit and shitting on the floor. That's all right. Yeah, it's, a it's really a shit show at Amy's house. 
That's what I'm saying. Today it was literally a shit show. Literally a shit show. Literally. Poor shit show. Yeah. So Chris is a Reiki master too. Mm-hmm. Um, Steve asks her what led her down that road. And as a child, she had a neuroblastoma cancer, which is a brain cancer, and it had a low percentage of survival. No, neuroblastoma is not necessarily brain cancer. Well, the one she had was though. Was it? I don't remember her saying. I thought it about was. Brain. Oh, because okay. no, neuro makes you think that, but it also goes along with nerves in the oh, gland system. Maybe I just made that up. I thought she said brain <laughs> cancer. I but... looked up. I looked it up on the American Cancer Society, and I dropped some links about oh. what neuroblastoma is. I thought I she said that, but, but I'll maybe put it I. In the show notes. I, she might it's have. Commonly and I affects it, the. Ad- nah, I probably did. <laughs> commonly affects the adrenal glands that sit on the kidneys. Oh, okay. It's a very. It's a. It's common in children under the age of five. Common, really. Um. That's where it's common is in children under the age of okay. five. It is considered a rare type of cancer oh. where it's under 20 cases a year, but it's rare for somebody over the age of five to get it. Oh, I see what you so, mean. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a typically rare form of cancer. That's common in young children. More common yeah. in those under the age of five. And I think I saw in the Facebook group that there were some comments that uh, she was three okay. She oh, okay. was when, it, when she was affected by okay. it. So there's more uh, information from Mayo Clinic, uh, but normally affects the adrenal glands that sit on the kidneys, but can affect other parts of the the body. Um, stage four, which is what they said oh she had, God. has a very low chance. So typically stage four is... Well, stage four of any cancer that's a, is pretty low. Stage High. four is that like... I mean, low highest, risk of yeah. survival. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah. Risk of survival. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'll, I, if you let me finish my sentence, I'll get there. <laughs> so stage four has it's a like higher and like higher end cancer. Like, like the Gucci of cancers. Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there's usually a lower chance of survival rate for this. Uh, this one has a. F- relatively high when you look at what stage four is at different cancers, uh, 50% survival rate beyond five years. A friend of mine passed away from colon cancer at the age of 28 with stage four, and that was like a 3% survival Ooh. rate past. Yeah, colon's yeah. a pretty bad one. That is a bad one. Get your yep. colonoscopies, so, people. Yeah. Clean those pipes. It's not fun, but it's worth it. And if you've got a history of it in your family, it can be genetic. So get yep. it checked out. Yep. And if you're old, get it checked out either way. Check it out. And they also, in some of the reading that I did with uh, on neuroblastoma, is that it can run in families. Oh. Uh, it doesn't doesn't mean that it is genetic, but it is potential that it could be. They're still trying to understand how everything mm-hmm. works, mm-hmm. like we see with breast cancer mm-hmm. and stuff as well. So, uh, yeah, this it was this was a. a episode that definitely impacted me in different ways not that i've known anybody with neuroblastoma but i've known others you know katie was somebody who i knew and with the colon Mm -hmm. cancer and she was like an older sister to Mm -hmm. me and it's we're 13 years 14 years since she was diagnosed Uh, just about yep mm -hmm. 12 years sorry math but she was yeah Mm -hmm. 28 wow Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's young. Yikes. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah, she said that she when she looked into energy stuff, um, but at three, she was interested in that stuff? Probably after. No, I, would, I think that later. she got older. Yeah, as she, she got recovered. older. Okay. And got, yeah. yeah. So that would be, that's what I took from it. it, it like maybe you're. It sounded like she had a f- few bouts mm-hmm. of it with it, oh. maybe. From the very early on, she said something about that. And Reiki was a way for her to help kind of mellow out her energies or like control her energies. Reiki is a healing thing too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she said she had been doing, well, Steve's like, so apparently this is uh, more than you can handle or something like that. He said it kind of rude. And I'm like, oh, he said it rude in the reveal too. I'm like, dude, she's like 12 years old. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, she wasn't, but obviously. But, and she's, I mean, poor thing is sobbing throughout this. And I wrote down the tears and fear are definitely real. Not Brittany. Not Brittany. (laughs) And she's Hashtag definitely scared. To, <laughs> she's definitely scared to lose her family. I did say when she was crying, he didn't offer a hanky. And I, I said, that. rude, Steve. I did that in my row. Why didn't he offer a hanky? Yeah, rude. You offer <laughs> Steve, everybody else so, a hanky, but not the 10-year-old? Come on. 
I re- I remember something long ago, and I don't know. I haven't ever looked into this if this was true, but somebody said that there had been some research into like the handing of a Kleenex or hanky or something like that is actually almost like a brushing off. Like I don't want to deal with your emotions, uh, really? so here's oh. your. Uh huh. Oh. And I was like, so somebody was tying it into like it, it's a subconscious thing that people do to be like. I don't know how to deal I with it. Oh, I think it's now. sweet. Yeah, I don't think I, that's how I don't think I'm that's just, how Steve meant it when he gave I'm just them saying out. that's that is something that was put out there in the ether a long time ago around my brain. I don't I don't think Steve's that rude either. No. I mean, he, he would probably if it was me crying because I'm too liberal for him. Right. But um but my I don't, tears don't count. My tears don't count. But um allegedly. I should say I, I'm only guessing what Steve would think. I don't think he yeah. would like me. No. But yeah. That's anyway, okay. so, okay. Are we ready to move on to the Amy's? Does anybody Sorry. have any more about the the first section with Steven and Mm-mm. Steve and Krista? I love how you call him Steven. I meant Steve and. That's when you're really mad at him. <laughs> Steven. <laughs> well, we have done. We have called him that before. We have called him that. When we're mad at him. Yeah. We full name him. We don't know his Steven. middle name. No. Okay. So, next we're at Amy and she sees an elderly woman who looks like a rotting corpse with two lights for eyes and red hair and i wrote coming in hot <laughs> uh to me do you get was it jeepers creepers or something like that where the headlights like i don't know there's a mm. there's a few different shows like that oh bly manor oh in bly manor mm. yeah it, like i got an image of something like yeah. that yep but when you say jeepers creepers too i'm i think i'm picturing the the movie poster and i think it does have Spotlight eyes or mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. I, I bet Megan knows for sure. Because Megan watches all that shit. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yep. horror <laughs> movies, bring it on. No, I don't. And I'm trying She's to regretting not, very much saying that. Um, impart that on Jordan because I know that I'm like ridiculously terrified of things. <sighs> yeah. I, I mean, I'm trying not to. Yeah, but it's he's kind of he's starting to like kind of be more afraid of the dark now. Oh, well, he'll be like, Mama, dark. And I'm like, "Uh." yeah, I know. I'm like, it's okay. It's just dark. But, you know, in my mind, I'm like, girl, I, yeah, be afraid of it because you don't know what's out there. (laughs) It is. I mean, they're afraid of the fear of the dark is fear of unknown. So Mm -hmm. just let your eyes acclimate to the darkness and then you can see a lot of stuff. See, yeah, and that's even scarier. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. That's me at 3 a.m. when I after that I have to let the dogs out and then I have to try to get back to sleep and I just lay there with my eyes closed and I'm like, oh, now I see something over here. <gasps> you do that too? Mm-hmm. Yes. And I'm looking, I'm like, oh, the spots are yellow. Oh, they're blue. Yep. And then I'm like, I'm oh, trying no, to be I asleep. People. I see faces. I see people. No, I see um, when spots. When I close my eyes. Not all the time though. Anyways. I see. I see like swirls and and I see yep, faces. I see swirls. I, I see don't things see fa- that become faces and then they swirl back out. I had last over the weekend when I went back to bed after feeding the dogs. It was a long hallway and there was doors on either side and there was a man that was coming walking towards me like he had something to oh say. God. I wasn't scared oh, or anything. Okay. I was just like, "Hey, what who are you?" But I didn't get any. I but he kept coming. There was a couple of times and it would like, he'd I don't start understand. Kind of like, um, you weren't afraid. I don't understand. I would literally <laughs> be like fuzzy and just it'd be drop, drop, drop of shit as I ran away. <laughs> it's do you, have you guys done like the glaucoma test or whatever where they poof mm-hmm. the eye? Yeah. Where it like has the little house and then yes. it, it, yep. that was kind of like it, what it was. He'd get into focus and then it would set him backwards oh. Oh, and then weird. he'd get back into focus and then set him backwards. But I, no, I had been talking to my grandparents over the weekend, but oh. it's not not the shape of any of them. Weird. It was a tall man. Weird. Maybe you'll find out who he is sometime. Yeah. Anyway, so this lady is loud. Lights for eyes. <laughs> yeah, lights for eyes. That's that could be a good title, except that all of our titles are Ghost Gone Wild. We could do AKA Lights for Eyes. Lights for anyway. Eyes. Ratty hair. Aggressive. Oh my. <laughs> Haven't done it. <laughs> Guys, I have a really great idea. <laughs> never been done before. <laughs> We've never done it. <laughs> nope. Okay, so this lady wants to be seen. She wants to be the center of attention, and multiple people are being affected. I know people like her. Yes, we all I'm do. I'm right here. <laughs> 
I wasn't going to say anything about you. I know. I, one of my dogs is that person. Gracie. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no hesitation. Nope. <laughs> we all know that one. Because you can't walk into a room without her going, hi, 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 hi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> row, 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 row. Rogum, rogum, rogum. I hate it in this, though, where Amy's like, she puts her mind in yes. their minds. Yes. Ew. Yes. I hated Get that. Get out. Yes. Out. And then she says she's trying to talk to them, but it sounds like gibberish. And Amy mm-hmm. says it makes no sense because her brain's all over the fucking map. Yeah. <laughs> okay. First of all, same. Um, yeah. <laughs> same. It's called ADHD. I was telling the girls in our chat, I started to do my notes Saturday. <laughs> and I, you guys, I have watched 11 minutes of the show total. Between that time, I had made two phone calls. I texted two people. <laughs> I had played a game and I'd done my word puzzle. <laughs> it was like 30 minutes to watch 11 minutes because yeah. I just kept, I would write a sentence and then I'd stop and do something else. Yeah. yeah. So my mind is all over the map too. Yep. Is you what gotta, I'm trying to say. Yeah. Write all that down. So that when you go to your, talk to somebody, you can be like, yeah. Here's, They'll be like, do you have an example? And I'm like, yeah. hold the fuck on. I'm going to just let me pull out this scroll. And I actually will write it, it on the back of a CVS receipt, and then I'll just have to have one <laughs> piece of paper. <laughs> the joke is that the CVS receipts are really long. That's right. <laughs> it's not as funny if you have to explain it. <laughs> well, our friends in the UK might not know. That they CVS might not know what CVS is long. and that the their receipts store. are super long. That it has, it's super long, be- not because you buy a lot. It's super long no. because it has 5,000 ads on the back. Yeah. And coupons. And coupons. It's ridiculous. Oh, my God. Anyways, anyway, we're never going to get we are. We, are, we are in like the third section here and 47 minutes in. Okay. <laughs> so the living room, are we? can we move on to the living room? Steve's we can turn? move on to the living okay, room. Okay. So we're in the living room. There's crippling anxiety. Oh, no, this is still Amy. Yeah, we're in the living room. We're still, this is still Amy. Okay. I, I, it's a different color on my screen and it shouldn't Are be. you reading Amy APs? Miss, I my, color-coded mm-hmm. my notes. I color-coded. What well, I did, I color I just make Amy look bad. I make Amy's and Steve's sections different colors. Oh, okay. So that I can tell what's happening. Mm-hmm. Like who whose it is. But and so this one, it was it was green is, and then it was yellow and it shouldn't have been because it's still Amy's. No, this is um this is Steve. Oh wait, never mind. I'm Steve looking at my notes. Never mind. No, it is it is <laughs> it is Steve with the crippling anxiety oh, and depression right, right, that comes right. out of nowhere. Yeah, I know I'm right. <laughs> I thought this was you two talked yourselves out of being. I right. thought this was Amy feeling the crippling anxiety, depression, and brain fog. This is Krista telling Steve, mm-hmm. and it only happens when you're at yes. home and you hear voices, but you can't oh. figure them out. She sees a figure that's mimicking her I mom. I hate She's, mimickers. Her mom, she goes. Yes. Well, we learned a new term for it later yeah, on, we do. so stay oh, tuned. I didn't notice that term. Yeah, it was it and. AP and I both tried to look it up and I didn't find anything. I didn't find anything, but I have some thoughts on it. So, uh, but I think now we are back to Amy. (laughs) Uh, She sees the elderly woman. She's storming through. She, she says she doesn't know how these people stay in the house. Um, They might see this lady. She hates everything and everybody, but she wants to be alive again, which is not good Mm -mm. because it means she might try to possess someone or jump them. And she puts her hand over the living people's mouths and gets right in their face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, that's creepy as hell. Yeah. Yeah, So the way I do my notes, I've started doing like correlates to so-and-so. So So the different things. So like Steve is talking with Krista in her room and we start hearing about feeling of being held down while she's sleeping. She's awake and she knows she's awake, but she can't move. Mm -hmm. But it's not quite sleep paralysis because she can move her body, but she can't get up. Right. Yeah. The nightmare is being super graphic. Yes. Oh. Um, Specifically seeing her brother dying, uh, like he drowned Mm -hmm. in the bottom of the pool. Um, and then she feels like something is attached and it crawls into my brain and tries I hate that. Uh, to cause as much mental anguish. So that might be where you get confused. Um, is this Amy yeah. or is this Krista <laughs> talking? Because Krista was very much going through like how Amy might describe something going on inside of her brain. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, it comes at me at night uh-huh. and stays with me all day. Yeah. And Steve hate called it. it a temporary possession. 
Gross. Mm -hmm. Which I hate that. We find out it kind of is. Yeah. Yeah. Amy says, the woman comes in here to work. Yeah. And Matt's like, uh, what do you mean work? (laughs) To kill the person. Mm -hmm. She thinks that by, she thinks that if she kills this person, she can take their soul to become alive Mm -hmm. again. I don't think that's how it works. No. I mean, what she really wants is the girl's body. Mm -hmm. She wants to be, inhabit the girl's body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's not what she must be presenting to Amy. So she's a little. Well, Well, she did say her mind was all over the place. She's cuckoo bananas. We know that. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now we talk to Mike, Krista's father. And like, like AP said, it says Mike on the thing, but they all call him Michael. Yep. Um, He was not a believer, but he is now. Bingo. Check. Check. Yep. There's another. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have to add to the bingo card the husband who, the reluctant husband mm-hmm. who thinks that everything yep. is bullshit like mine. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> he has seen apparitions. He saw a guy standing there looking at him and he turns and walks away. And Steve asked if it was just like a mist or whatever. And he said, no, full facial features. He knew exactly yeah. what they look like. He even he said he clothing. had a gray beard. Yep. Like that's how clear this apparition was. Yep. Yeah, and Steve goes, you sure? You're, you sure? And he's like, yeah, I'm sure I wasn't yeah, dreaming. fuck you, Steve. Just yeah. kidding. But. And then he says that he feels like he's watched in the bedroom, and Steve asks if it's the dogs. Yep. I said, you have three dogs. You sure it's not that's them? That's going on the bingo card, too. Yeah. I said, not the dogs, Steve. Mm-hmm. It's never the dogs. Not the dogs. I, I added a word in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a family podcast. We're keeping it PG. <laughs> Well, no, we might not. be a fish dam. No, we're not. I mean, I wouldn't say it goes. Well, we're yeah. not. It's it's not eh. a family podcast. Mm-mm. But uh, Mike or Michael uh, said he feels like something grabbed him and like pushed him over, like it wanted to sit next to him on mm-hmm. the bed. But then has also said like he feels like twenty people are are tugging on me. And then we cut to Amy. Yeah, <laughs> and she. <laughs> She's like, she's doing weird shit in here. She likes the man. She wants his attention. Matt goes, why? She's got the hot for him. (laughs) And Matt's face, I took a screenshot, or I took a picture of that. Matt's face was like, (laughs) yeah, it was funny. Like, what? That's like better him than me. (laughs) That'll be in the, uh, in the video version of this. Yeah. You guys want to watch that. It'll be right here. She's like. She's like petting him, mm-hmm, like, yeah. oh, look at your eyebrows. Oh, look at your ears. Oh, look at this over it was here. So like, funny the way Amy's like, like she's she's imitating. She's touching she's, the pillow. She's touching the pillow and she's poking at it, like, oh, look at your eyebrows. Oh, look at your ears. And I'm like, oh my god. And mm-hmm. then she says, it's fucking weird. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, dude, it's fucking weird. Yeah. And then she says, it's constant. Oh my god. And this lady uh, takes showers with them. To which I literally out loud went, ew. Yeah. Ew. Like, does I, I yelled that. Yelled. Yeah. She doesn't leave no. their house when uh, she doesn't leave their side when they're until they're out of the house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Amy says they would have dreams about her. And she did say there's nights that she'll touch the man all night long. She'll yeah. just be touching him yeah. all night. God, can you imagine? No. He, pro- he must think he has a spider on his face. Then he'll probably just casually brush it off. <laughs> That was like the guy from the last episode. Yeah. Um, so this past weekend, I was sitting in the basement and I was watching a movie and um, I saw a spider was on it, the wall. Was it uh, Roller Gator? It was Roller Gator. Did you watch like 10 minutes at a time? No, or? I watched the whole thing. What do you mean? Did I miss a joke? Oh, because you because you can't watch the Dead Files more oh. than 10 minutes <sighs> at a time. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> No. Um, so I was sitting watching Roller Gator and <laughs> superb movie. I watched it too. Megan and I watched it at the same time and texted each other about it. It was so um, bad. Gummies but, were involved. Mm, I ha- Yes. So there was a spider on the wall and it was a big spider. And so I hit it with my, my um, slipper because I called my husband and he didn't answer. And I said, I've got to take things into my own hands. And so I killed, I hit the spider and it fell down behind the couch. And I didn't know if it died. So that was the end of my night in the basement. And it was like 10 <laughs> o'clock and I went well, upstairs and I went to bed. I was like, I don't know where he is. I'm out. Joe's <laughs> so like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, he could come back and kill me. 
I still to the to this day, granted it was only two days ago, I don't know what the plot of Roller Gator was. I do not know what happened in that movie. Um, I don't know that it had a plot. It was a stuffed, like it, like not even stuffed. It was like a balloon of a of a It was of a, a puppet. It was a puppet alligator, purple. That she carried around in alligator. her backpack. Yeah, she and said, its this hands girl, were weirdly on its nipples. It was stuck to it. They were stuck to it because they didn't move because they were. Yeah, it wasn't a good puppet. I don't even know what the plot of this movie yeah. was. And there was a weird That's guitar the entire movie in the background. Yeah, it was. It looked like it was made by five year olds, and then it, did. it had it the terrible, this terrible dialogue. What was it? Booger breath was what the Booger gator breath, called somebody. Fish, and- he called them fish fish bait brains instead of fish for brains. Fish bait brains. It's it's like it, uh, you, what you would expect a, a like seven or eight year old boy to write. Uh, yeah, the, it's pretty bad. It was so bad. It was hilarious though. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was. Um. Anyway, I don't know what got me on that tangent, but back, spider. The spider. Thank you. The spider. Oh yeah, the spider. Thank you. <laughs> we we made the connection. Thank you. I'm glad you somebody's on top of this. That should be on the bingo card too. Megan gets confused. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the free space. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody gets that one. Everybody gets that one. <laughs> okay. So <sighs> Michelle, the mom, she also felt someone sitting on the bed and touching her. And she thought it was Michael mm-hmm. and it wasn't him. And she said, Michael's touching seems appropriate. I mean, <laughs> Michael's the way the lady touches Michael is appropriate. Inappropriate. <laughs> it's appropriate mm-hmm. for the setting. Yeah, and she sees her touching the way the lady touches her as more loving, which yeah, which, I was like, are I don't think so. Are you are you sure? Yeah, because in the reveal, Amy's like she wants him. She hates everybody else, yeah, so she's she not hates. lovingly mm-hmm. touching you. No, no, but yeah, but we don't spend a lot of time talking about Michelle. No. Michelle, we have a first that I know of in the show. It with. Steve saying, so Michael Anthony's over there, huh? Mm. Can I talk to him? And she had already been talking about like some of the experiences that he's been going with. She said, I don't know what's going on with him, but I don't think yeah. so. And she said he so can't that's do first, it. He can't like, do it. And then we hear a little bit more later mm-hmm. on. But I don't remember having one where we talk about no. somebody. And not like, not that they can't they do can't, it. It's just that they can't do it. They, a lot of times we get that they were yeah. interviewed and they just didn't yeah. show it. Yeah. They, so I think they did that to showcase how bad he really was. Yeah. Because yeah. yep. he was in a very bad place that we learn later. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And she did I, say okay. at that time that he was held down in that back bedroom that used mm-hmm. to be his. Back bedroom. Yeah. And his overall behavior has become dark and depressed. Very moody. And she angry. says, I'm afraid I'm going to lose my yeah. son. That was really sad. This whole family was just so sweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were. But when Amy goes into that back bedroom, she's like, oh, there's sadness. Oh, my God. I don't like it in mm-hmm. here. Like, she's just very mm-hmm. like, oh, no. Like, she's like, I just um, want to burst out crying. Mm-hmm. You could, you feel like you want to start bawling in here. Just wretched crying, mm-hmm. which to me, like wretched is like stomach is so tight that you're almost peeing yes. because you're crying so like hard. Like you're crying with your whole body. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she said, I don't know if it's the dead or the living mm-hmm. crying. Yeah. But she said, overwhelmingly, the feeling of the person is an empath mm-hmm. and that Amy was getting physical. This person was getting physical with the person, hitting them in the stomach, hitting and tripping. She's just having fun torturing this person. Yeah, the ghost is having fun torturing him and she said this per- the person in this room needs help asap yep yep so they were right about michael to be worried about him right and and i think another thing we need to put on the bingo card is that one of the clients has abilities oh that's a yeah. good one and this yeah. one there will be three yeah <laughs> or maybe even four i don't know they didn't really say that much about the dad but everybody else mm-hmm Okay, so now Steve's doing his off-site investigation. He meets with some animal control experts to rule out the fact that there might be animals that got inside the house. They basically live in a freaking swamp. Yeah, they live in a swamp. They got roosters and chickens and goats. And the men say... The animal control... That's the title. The animal (laughs) control experts' names are Isaac and Kevin. 
I wrote them oh, down. Yes. Okay, they okay. were delightful. I, I appreciated Isaac and Kevin because they're like, yeah, I mean, there's definitely rodent activity in the attic and roof, but they're not getting in the house. Yeah. So th- one of them said, I don't think this is the activity your clients mm-hmm. are experiencing. Right. And I'm like, Steve, really? You think that monkeys and pythons yeah. are grabbing them while they're sleeping? Well, I can tell you that a mouse falling on you does not feel like somebody grabbing nice. you because we, when we were deer camp years and years ago, just have like naked beams up on the top and put some clothes on, on them a cot. for Pete's sake. <laughs> this is a family show. Have hot. some dignity. It was hot. And up in the loft, all the heat comes up to the top. So you sleep with like your leg out because you're just okay. sweating Okay, that's how buckets. the monsters get you. <laughs> And well, the mouse got me and all of a sudden I, I'm kind of half awake, but then I feel uh, on my bare skin, four little feet mm-hmm. running up my this leg. Is reason, I was like, this is reason one billion why I'm don't I like, sleep outside. What the hell is that? And I, I kicked my leg across. Oh. And, I mean, the room isn't very big. And my buddy Kevin was on the other cot like five, six feet away. And he goes, what was that? I go, a mouse. He goes, dang it. Because <laughs> we clean out the, we do the, our best to clean out the mice, but they can get into anything. Yeah. But I can tell you, four little feet running up your leg does not feel like a human hand grabbing right. you, even a mouse falling off of the ceiling. I mean, that'd be, that'd be Great. Now really I have a mouse. new fear unlocked of a mouse <laughs> falling on my head. Great. It fell on my leg. It's fine. <sighs> I always on. worry that I'm going to get a mouse crawling on me because we do. We used to, anyway, have mice down down here in the basement. But I'm always afraid of spiders. I didn't even think about mice. I'd prefer a mouse to a spider, honestly. But they have mm, gross tails. Okay. No, they and they can carry rabies, so you could get real sick if you got bit by one. So okay, we need to move on because I'm okay. just feeling right everything along. on me. Here, this will turn you right up. Amy Great. was shown a bed with arms coming out from oh, under. Oh, that's right. Wonderful. And something grabbed her ankle. And she said, there's a nice little hole under the bed. Yep. And this lady does not want Amy to see it. Because that's where she lives. <clears throat> she yep. lives in the hole under the bed. Yep. The ghost lady. Yep. So great, great. for her. Who lives in a hole under the bed? <laughs> ghost <laughs> lady. <Creepy> corpse lady. <laughs> square pants. <With> lights for ice. <laughs> Who lives in a hole under the bed? It's creepy. We, we need to workshop yeah. it a little bit. We're, it's, we're, we're, we're going to work on it. It's uh, yeah. it's in progress. It's going to be a new hit. Wait for our single. I bet you Taylor Swift will sing it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Next up is the genealogist. Not a gynecologist. His name is Mark Fearer. And they're on one of those marsh boats. Hi, Airboat. 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 Cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was like, "What was the point of that, you guys?" It was what so was dumb. The point? Steve, Steve goes, "I don't usually have my interviews like this, or whatever the know, hell he said." But it's just like, like, "Do it." They must have paid what? a lot of money for that boat, and that's why they wanted to make sure they showed it. What was the point? I, I it know. had nothing to do with anything. No, it didn't. Because they were in the Everglades, and I here's where I think it connects is to the person's story that we hear about. Because uh, yeah, I guess loosely. they did want to show that we're in a marsh. Very right loosely, now, I guess. So Ma- Mark, the genealogist, tells us a, about <laughs> not a gynecologist, not a gynecologist, uh, Richard J. Bowles. And there was some confusion on at least my part because I couldn't understand what, if his name was Bowles. The close captioning said B-U-L-L-S. Yes. Yeah. And then later it was B-O-L-E-S. Yeah. And then the death certificate said B-O-L-L-E-S. Yes. Yep. That's how I knew because I stopped. I paused and that's on the that's where I found it online. Yeah. I did find a bunch of stuff on him. Actually, I couldn't find mm-hmm. anything at first, and then I know APU found some stuff, and then I went back today and I found a whole bunch more stuff. So I'll I'll put the links in the show notes. We can talk about some of it if you want. But they so skimmed over yeah. this so this much. Is actually, a really fascinating story. It it's is really really interesting about this guy. So he was super charismatic, ladies man. He was short. Five six, which made me laugh because isn't that how how, how tall Steve is? Yeah, yeah. Um, so they call him the Napoleon of Finance, which I never found any information on that. I looked up who they called Napoleon of Finance, and I found somebody named like Ferdinand Ward or oh, something like really? that. Really, I did find one article about Richard. They called him Dicky, Dicky Bowles, mm-hmm. and he 
Um, it it did mention Napoleon of Finance, but I didn't find it by Googling Napoleon of Finance. I found it by yeah, Googling. Yeah, I, I Googled Balls. the Napoleon of Finance because I was like, well, if somebody's got a nickname like that, because he was also on the New York yeah. Stock Exchange at the age of 23. Which is supposed, yeah. Yeah, in 1800s, because yeah. he was born in 18... He was 73 when he yeah. died in 1917. Oh, his, I found his birth date on... I found his grave, actually. So I on the Find a Grave website. Okay. Anyway, I don't recall what his birth, date of birth was. But uh, at at in 1908... Oh, he was married. Uh, his wife's name was Julia. Things went bad. He had some affairs and bad investments. Uh, in 1908, he got a half a million acres of swamp land from the government to sell. You forgot that he had a divorce. So has affairs, a divorce, bad investments. His life yes, goes to shambles, yes. which is definitely. Julia with, yeah. And then he some of the property that he was given to sell uh, is the client's property. And he convinced people who had never been to Florida uh, that they should come here and buy this swamp land. He said it was they called it uh Paradise Garden of Eden. He yep, he called called it the Garden of Eden, Tropical Paradise, and the Promised yeah. Land. So I found information specifically on this and why he got the five hundred thousand acres. Okay. Because that wasn't really clear to us. Like, why is he being yeah, handed I that was weird this too. acreage? Mm-hmm. So he didn't technically, I don't think he owned it, but he was given it to sell. So what happened was um he had he had other land schemes. It, he had a mine in Colorado and farms in Oregon. So he's approached by the governor and the former governor or the governor and the future governor of Florida as they were doing reclamation of the swampland. So they were supposed to be literally draining the swamp and <laughs> putting it into more fertile soils to encourage people to live in Florida. But it didn't really get drained. So he had multiple companies out there to sell the land. So he had salespeople out there selling the land for him. And they had one was the Florida Fruitlands Company, where they were selling 180,000 acres of the farm for up to 12,000 acres or 12. Yeah, 12,000 farms, sorry, which is about 15 acres. And each of those farms would have cost $240 in 1908, which is about $8,000 today. Still a good deal. For 15 acres, that's really yeah. good. Um, the salespeople went across the country promoting you know, promising a Garden of Eden, the tropical paradise or tropical land. Mm -hmm. So this is a quote from one of the articles. These swamp boomers enticed potential buyers with sales literature quoting government officials who extolled the possibilities of the Everglades. In one such advertisement, U.S. Secretary of Agriculture James Wilson said, quote, that doubting Thomases were waiting for the Everglades to develop before buying would regret it all their lives, end quote. Oh. And that was from a website that's everglades.fiu.edu uh, that I got that from. So it kind of, he got put into this position a little bit because he could spin a tail. Mm-hmm. And then when it started going south, the government was like, oh, we didn't have anything to do with yeah. that. Because they went after him mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was sued by them for fraud by the government. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I mean, he's just a real estate broker. I mean, yeah. that it said real estate was his on his death certificate. Uh, one more yep. thing I want to mention about his death certificate. It said he was a widower. Really? Interesting. It didn't say he was divorced. It said he was a widower. Well, did he divorce Julia the physical way? So <laughs> I don't know if I was wondering... Okay, well, let's let's move on a little to what happens with when he dies, or if you want to mm-hmm. talk any more about what happened while he was alive, Mm-mm. we should do that now. No, nope, okay. just when he when he passed was in a smoking car of pulmonary edema, yeah. and in a large yep. heart. And then they and, did say out of nowhere, a woman came forward claiming they'd been married for like twenty years with yeah. two children, and that he was married, um, that he was with this. She said she was with him even when he was married to Julia. To Julia. They were so having now, an affair. I'm, now I'm wondering if she is like the first wife that died, quote unquote, but didn't really. Like he just said she well, was. But dead. they only talked about Julia as the first wife and then that he divorced and then they didn't say anything about another person until she came so out. So maybe right. he was married, kept her as a mistress for 20 years, but they only mentioned her. I don't know. I'm just wondering who this dead wife is. Yeah. And that's why I'm wondering if this woman maybe was the dead wife, wasn't really dead. And she came back saying, Hey, I've been here this whole time. I have kids Mm -hmm. with him. I've known, I've been with him for 20 years. 
but he somehow told somebody that oh. she said but she said she was she was having an affair with him while he was with Julia. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. I just thought it was weird that it said and they didn't they didn't talk about this in the show at all, him being a widower. I just noticed it no. on the certificate. Because I I'm always nosy and I always stop and pause and take a picture and then embiggen it. I'm curious if he he I'm because he divorced Julia. Maybe that he got married afterwards, even though he was starting to have issues and whatnot. I don't know. I, All I know is that at one he point did, well, I. He, oh, no. OK. The woman that came back. The woman that came back, her name was Sarah, Susan Thompson. Bowles. Susan. Th- yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Susan Thompson, who came out trying to get the his get money. his will, yeah. but she couldn't prove mm-hmm. anything. Basically, we don't really learn a lot about this. We just know that she was there. And Steve has another super sensitive comment. OK, so we got this dead con man and a secret wife and kids. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have a lot of respect for the dead con man. So that's why he called him that. Yeah. I know. I'm like, but <clears throat> wouldn't we call him something else today? Who does the dead con man make you think of? I'm not tracking. I'm not tracking. Orange man. He's not dead. Oh. I know he's not dead. <laughs> so you're saying Steve thinks this considers this guy a con man, but not his favorite guy. Got yep. it. Okay. Yep. I thought I was supposed to be thinking of another dead con man. And he's no. not dead. So no, 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 I did, no. I was thinking of the orange guy. But Mm -hmm. I I was like, nah, that's not what she means because he's not dead. Okay, got it. Yeah. So they show Amy going into the house from the outside. It looks like she's entering the first time. So I think that's edited strangely. Mm -hmm. I think this is what she sees right away in the beginning. The elderly man in his 70s, he's about 5'7", and he's afraid of someone. And she thinks it's his wife, and that's the elderly lady, and that he knows that she's crazy. Mm-hmm. And she said, Amy says he has some heart problems and thinks the lady may have killed him. Mm-hmm. So pulmonary edema is liquid in the lungs, by the way. Right. Just edema means swelling, right? Like fluid swelling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So pneumonia. Mm-hmm. Maybe she tried to drown him once or twice. Yeah. That classic old tale. <laughs> that old chestnut. <laughs> drown me once. Drown me once. <laughs> fool me once. Drown me twice, I die. I don't know. I that was terrible. <laughs> we'll workshop it. We'll workshop it, it along we'll, with we'll our get song. Back to you guys on that one. That'll be with <laughs> Stay our. Stay tuned. Our, That'll be our yeah. second hit. Yeah, off of our first album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was digging around, digging through the archives, I found uh a, an interesting article that I will put in the show notes. But uh, it, one Iowa investor said after purchasing the swamp land and, and inspecting it he said i have bought land by the acre and i have bought land by the foot but by god i have never before bought land by the gallon ah because it's swampy because <laughs> it's all wet it's all water and then i was wondering why anybody was looking for any money because i thought he died poor because um he was tied up this, in lawsuits he was all these lawsuits but it yeah. said it said he was a millionaire yeah, it's multimillionaire it said that um Amazingly, that's in in his trials, especially the biggest one. The jury decided that Dickie Bowles was a quote unquote honest man, and he was judged innocent by the court. He was later awarded one point four million by the state of Florida for wow. his past land sales. I I I think that there's more to the story here, and I do think that there is something that was he was he was the scapegoat mm-hmm. for the government. Mm-hmm. I mean, he made some of those deals, and he made but. He was told that they were doing the reclamation, that mm-hmm. they were, you know, making this land into something that was usable. Yep. yep. But that doesn't get really shown in the show. No, no, it doesn't. This is all just stuff we found. <laughs> yep. Okay. So now we're with Amy. She is, uh, she's talking about the old lady still. And she says that the lady uh, is telling her to get out, but is showing her diamond jewelry. And she's all about her appearance. Mm-hmm. She likes to act like she has money. She says she was thin. I was skinny all my life. She had kids and did really bad things with money with that guy out there, Amy says, that she thinks is her husband. Mm -hmm. That she may or may not have killed. So do we think this is, is this Julia or is this Susan? I think Susan. Susan. Okay. Yep. 100%. It's Julia's, she's not around. Right. That's what I thought too. Yeah. Okay. So, and then I, my next section I wrote, did you have dream home on your bingo card? 
How about brutal murder? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another brutal homicide in the old records. Yes. I just, I hate that saying because to me, I feel like every murder is a brutal murder. Well, if you poison someone, that's not brutal. Brutal is like <laughs> I suppose, beating yeah. somebody or a brutal shooting murder. them a hundred times or I something suppose, like that. Yeah. There, are, there are very peaceful ways to kill somebody. Trust me, <laughs> okay. I've seen a lot of TV shows. Yeah. Have you been contemplating? Yeah. Me? What's Don't tell me I don't want to be an yeah. accomplice. No, not, no. Possible deniability. Moving on. No. no. <laughs> Heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> or did you? <laughs> uh, no, I'll cut it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. I won't. Hey, um, cut so it out. Steve goes to <laughs> Steve goes to talk to former detective Edward Wojtal. Wojtal. I just Wojtel. I would say Wodel. 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 Maybe the I I, I said Wojtal. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I, if I knew his Anyways. his ethnicity, I might know how to say his name, but I don't. He talks about a black couple, Lisa Forbes, who is 20, and Hugh Liverd, who is 27. And he said they had raised a four-year-old boy together, which I thought was really weird wording. That was Why didn't a weird, he just say they yeah. had a four-year-old son? Because later they say mm-hmm. that she bled to death in front of their little boy. Yeah. So it apparently was their kid. But I was like, yeah. was that not their kid? Was it just her kid? Or yeah. I, I, I don't right. know. Anyway, September 11th, 1982. The couple was in Lisa's apartment, which is also weird. I thought I was like, isn't it their apartment? Maybe they were separated. He grabs. Okay, hold up, hold up. Yeah, she would have been. Yeah, 16 she would have been. He would have been twenty three, and he would have been twenty three in nineteen eighty two. No, Maybe when they Steve had the baby, because if she was twenty in nineteen eighty two, their boy was well, four yeah. in nineteen seventy eight. She would have been twenty. No, or six, she would have been yeah. sixteen, and he would have been twenty three. Yeah, gross. That's disgusting. Yeah. What? Wait a minute. So, because if, again? so if, so if bo- she has a four year old yeah. boy, four, 20 minus four is 16. Right. 27 right? minus four he was 27. He 23. Yes, yes. When yes. they had the baby. Yes. So maybe Math. it's not her little boy, but it's theirs now. I I was wondering if it was her little boy because it was at her apartment then yeah. too. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Or he, any, or was he there with his little boy? I don't know. Couldn't find anything else yeah. on this yeah. story when I tried searching and for I it. Looked couldn't up find both a of thing. these people, and I couldn't find anything. I wondered if this story was just made up because I couldn't find anything. I found. Uh, let me see. I'll find where I wrote what I found. There was a Lisa Forbes, but she yeah. was she set for murdering murdered her boyfriend. Somebody, went to prison for it. Came out. Wrote a book. Is on the talk show circuit or whatever. Um, and then. There was there was a stabbing, or uh, and a knife. Yeah, we didn't get to that part, but he grabbed a six inch kitchen knife, stabbed her, slit her throat. She died in front of the child. Yep, she bled mm-hmm. out in front yep. of the child. Yep, and then he freaked out and ran. But yep. I did find that there was in this little. I shouldn't say little town. I don't know if it's a little town. I've never heard of it before. But at any rate, in Davie, Florida, in 1985, there was. A woman that was stabbed and her throat was slit, but that's not her name. And she, yeah, yeah, it's not. And the guy and is still were, alive couple, and in prison for doing it, and he's white. Yeah, so. there were there were a couple that were found like in the canal or mm-hmm. something like that. So. There were a whole bunch of unsolved but, murders, but I couldn't find anything about well, these two. I so couldn't I don't find even know anything. If this is true. And especially that's where I was like, well, maybe it's outside of Fort Lauderdale or something. But I was looking for that. But then again. Here's another one of the tropes that I'm like, oh, they use this to make it seem like it's closer where they said he drives to a swampy area that's about 2,000 feet from your client's property. Yeah. That's between a third of a mile and a half mile. Yeah, yeah. I put, I looked it up and it was it's 0.378.7879 miles. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. 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 I could not find anything about this. So who knows if it's even real. But then Amy had some connection because it was to the R, but it was connected to the RV, which mm-hmm. I thought was interesting mm-hmm. too, because that RV could have come from anywhere. Something could have been yep. in there. So Amy connects in, but she said, this is really weird. It's like someone's broken neck. It hurts really bad. I think it's a female. Oh yeah. They're dead. They're really dead. Really dark hair. She's a bigger girl, five ten, in her twenties and murdered. Yep. And then she also sees a guy who's acting zombie ish. Yep. He's walking mm-hmm. stiffly and strange. He's 6'2", 220 pounds or more. She thinks he might be black. 
This was in the 1980s. He was in his 30s and he gets up on Mm -hmm. you, made her nervous, and he showed her a swamp area. Mm -hmm. It sounds like this is who Amy is seeing, but yeah, yeah, we don't we don't talk about them in the reveal either. So they never come up again. No, (laughs) which is bizarre. Well, that they aired that they aired. Yeah, true, true, true. Absolutely Mm -hmm. could have happened. That reveal could have been 12 hours long, cut down to 10 minutes. And here's another um, another repeat. I saw several disturbing things on my walk, but blank stood out. Stood out the most. Yeah. So she mm-hmm. says she wants to, um, she has the old man who's bald, lots of wrinkles. Um, and she says lots of wrinkles on top, but she's just gesturing her upper lip. Super bushy mm-hmm. eyebrows and a thick neck. And then the old lady who made the hole under the bed to rest. And she, her body is decomposing, which I didn't remember her saying that before. She, she, she said did. that at the, yeah, at the beginning. beginning. She said she's like a rotting oh, corpse. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, you're right. You're right. With the eyes and all. Yep. Yeah, Jeepers Creepers. Yep. 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 So she is uh, coming up under the comforter. And Gross. then um, the other thing on the bingo card is, yes, that's what I saw. Mm-hmm. So anybody else want to talk about the reveal? Uh, I had in here that, um, at least from the way they edited it when Steve starts talking about, you know, we, we get in there first off, he, uh, throws Krista under the bus that she does Reiki, but this is obviously out of her league. Mm-hmm. And I was like, really? Like you couldn't have found a, a nicer, nicer way, way, to, different say way to say that. Um, and Amy just kind of was like, oh, okay. Yep. Like she, she's not in, it, it appears that she's nodding on it long. Like, yeah, I figured somebody was doing something yeah. or had some abilities yeah. here. Um, we talk about uh, a little dead guy who is very afraid of the deceased woman. And then Amy has a, what I call a light bulb moment when they start talking. Cause they were talking about Richard Bowles. Mm-hmm. And when the lawsuits are mentioned, she's like, Oh, oh yeah. I always call those light bulb yeah. moments because it's like something bang, just going on for everyone. I want to mention before we get too far, when when Amy was talking about the male and she said, he's a little guy. I'd put him at 5'7". And I wrote, shots fired because Steve is that height. And I felt like she was like, he's just a tiny little guy. Cut you. Yeah. But she, <laughs> I think I, I kind of took it as like a little old man, like kind of maybe hunched oh, over yeah. a little bit or something like that too. But I like your, <laughs> I like your thought. Um, and then we get the first picture, the first sketch right away. And I was actually surprised because Steve didn't really give away like he usually yep. does. It was just kind yeah. of like, you guys tell me. Mm-hmm. And Michael, the the father, goes, I got a knot in my throat because that's the guy I saw. And Amy says, holy yeah. shit. <laughs> and then and they, they all said, him. he said, I have a picture of him, you know, well before he died. And he looks so old. And I said, if he's that <laughs> old long before he died, what did he look like when he died? Yeah. He yeah. was probably a shriveled up raisin. Yes. Yeah. I, you know, the sketch was, it was good. I like, I was like, we didn't get a very long glance at it to see if it was really, I didn't, I didn't take a screenshot of anything of that, but. Oh, I did. Okay. And then, um, then we get like the dead woman is finally, the connection is there. Amy is like, yeah, they don't like each other. She was a housewife. Mm-hmm. Supposedly. So this was something that, learned in some of the uh other information is that supposedly they got married or this came out that they got married in 1896 but she couldn't prove it to the courts yeah she didn't have the the marriage certificate to prove it okay so that's not something we we heard earlier on in the show that's what we heard in the reveal so getting new information that's kind of vital in the reveal Mm -hmm. that's another thing that we've come across before well, but he, but again, we don't know if they had that and they cut it. He, yeah. yeah. And he and Julia were married when they were like, he, they said he married Julia at 23. Okay. They were young. So he would have been, yeah. So he would have been 53 ish when he married Susan. Okay. Cause he died at seven or yeah, he died at 73. Mm-hmm. So unless they had um, like a commitment ceremony and not like an actual marriage. Yeah. Who knows? Or she might have just been full uh, of shit. And trying to get money. <laughs> yeah. Amy, well, I mean, Amy does say it does feel like they're married. So yeah. um, she does confirm all of the activity that the family is feeling, the confusion, the mm-hmm. touching, the 
the brain fog, the the chaos, the depression. She calls the old woman an energy vampire. Yes. I used to work with and one of those. Technically, aren't all aren't all vampires energy vampires? No, they have like blood well, vampires your, and then energy vampires. They're different. I, I know, but what's but what's your blood? Yeah, but it's not the actual energy. It's just your blood. You're getting real technical. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, I know what an energy and a blood vampire are, but I'm just you're just being silly. You're being a silly goose. Silly goose. Why don't you go back to the pond if you're going to be a silly (laughs) goose? So this is where then Amy talks about um, when Amy talks about the the voices being gibberish. And she says she realizes Crystal realizes this is the one her brother has heard. Yes. And Mm -hmm. that's when Amy says she does. This woman does image borrowing. And this is the thing that's like the doppelganger or the mimic. She does image borrowing. Well, I Googled image borrowing and I could not find anything. See, and I think I what I feel like it's like is like she's putting on a Mm -hmm. mask. Like she is, she is putting on a full figure mask that she is the person, but she's not necessarily doing their mannerisms and all the things that would mimic everything, but she's doing just enough that you make out of the corner of your eye or down yeah. the hallway, you think it's the other person. Mm-hmm. Well, and Krista did say she looks a lot like my mom. Mm-hmm. She didn't say she looks mm-hmm. exactly like her, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. she looked enough like her for her to, to go, oh, that my mom turn over around there, and, and, and then and say, and say yeah. it yeah. wasn't her. I will say too, when they talked about the gibberish, Krista, when she was talking to Steve, had said she'll hear like gibberish being spoken. She's like, I don't understand what they're saying, but they, and then Michael Anthony said he heard someone speaking to him in tongues. Which was yeah. just yep. Susan and, being gibberish. And Krista is, you know, breaking yes. down at that she, point. You can tell they're a very close family because she's yeah. so yes. worried about her brother. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and Steve does give her a hanky. Yeah, he did. I said, yes. well, <laughs> fucking time, Steven. Uh, Amy t- tells them that this woman has the hots for Michael <laughs> and Michelle goes, she's got to go. Yep. And then this. But we don't. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just, are we, I was going to move on to the second sketch. Are you ready for that? Okay. Yep. Um, and then Steve is back to, you're not going to want to see this. Mm-hmm. Yep. This one was fucking terrifying. Was terrifying. I remember this one from the first time. That artist did a wonderful job mm-hmm. on this sketch. Yep. It was terrifying. I was not a fan. And I like, I play a little game as I go watch these shows to see which scene is Amy going to depict. Yeah. And so I try to guess. Did you guess who she's going to draw? Did mm-hmm. <laughs> you guess? Oh, yeah. Coming out yeah. from underneath, a, from, a, from hole a hole under yeah. the bed, like a troll. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's really creepy. Makes me think of, and that's yep. why we drink with M's troll hole. <laughs> yeah, but that sounds like that's a fun, a fun one. one. <laughs> that's a very much a fun troll yeah. hole. And this was a not a fun um, troll hole. It, yeah. And after we see the picture, then Amy starts talking about the back bedroom and says that person is in trouble mm-hmm. and needs help. They're in such a dark place. I couldn't, you know, like, and Steve says he was in such a dark place. I couldn't even talk Mm -hmm. to him. And Amy's like, whoa. And Krista starts going on how, um, you know, she's concerned for a brother. And Amy's like, well, you're the one who's most in danger. Yeah. Like. In the words of Whoopi Goldberg, (laughs) you in danger, girl. And then we find out um, about Krista's cancer. And Amy's reaction was like, oh. Okay, like it was like yeah, clicking. She was putting pieces mm-hmm. together, like, oh, now the puzzle picture mm-hmm. is clear. Yep. And she's like, yeah, she wants to jump you and she wants to kill and you. She has jumped her. Mm-hmm. She has been yes. doing temporary possessions. Yep. So that's why they recommend what they do at the end. But yes. Yeah. Yep. And that's after we hear about Krista getting jumped, we hear Michael say, I'm pissed as fuck and there's nothing <laughs> I can do about yep. it. And then Michelle says, I want this bitch out enough, enough. Yeah. And we take our commercial break to go to. (laughs) But then I will say Michelle did get up and hugged um, Krista because she was losing it. And I'm just like, you could just tell that this family was just really, really close and Mm -hmm. just genuinely concerned for one another, which is not always the case, Brittany. But um, yeah. Yeah. And then we do cut to commercial for the. What do they do? And the mm-hmm. other very much repeated phrase. And for that, I'm going to turn it over to Amy. Yep. Yep. So Amy says she's going to get a team in here that she works with. Her team. She her specifically team. said 
or a team of people. She said I, a team, a, a I team work of people with. I work yes. with. Yeah, I I think, which I thought was all... interesting because most of the time she'll say you need to find a Reiki yes. master, but this time this is so serious that yes. she's like, I'm gonna trust the people that I work with. Well, and I think she always wanted to, but um, they aren't always available to help everybody because they do mm-hmm. this on their own as well, not just mm-hmm. when Amy asks them to. Mm-hmm. And I did find out this is spirit mechanics. Okay. So, uh, and she said they have all types of abilities and they will take Michael Anthony and Krista away from the home, do a cord removal. Uh, of on the, Michael like, Anthony. On Michael and an exorcism for Krista. Because she's been jumped and... She yep. said, "Each time you're jumped, it leaves. They leave aspects of themselves yes. in you. Oh, that was which just is so gross. Which, like to me, explains part of why Krista doesn't ever remember. Mm-hmm. She like she yeah. says she feels some of these things, but she doesn't remember. She doesn't see herself in danger because she's not. Because the woman's know. like blocking. Right. The, she doesn't know well, everything like happening to her. To make sure. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep." And then she just starts crying. Chris is yeah. crying yeah. because like you hear the word exorcism. That's very scary. That's scary. That's really scary. Mm-hmm. Because you think of the movie that I will never see. But um, <laughs> oh, I saw it. Oh, my God. I'll never in my mm-hmm. life see it. Never. I, the first time I watched it. I saw the newest. Too. I actually I was still um, sort of a, a believer back when I watched it. And so when I watched it and she was doing I won't even you probably know what scene I'm talking about. Um it Is has, it the split pea soup no, scene? No, it's before that. And she's doing something with a cross and mm. um, and saying something awful. And I was like, oh, my God, my house is going to get struck by lightning. And I had to turn it off. I, I don't know that <laughs> scene. I only know the split pea soup scene. Okay. My dad used to go because it came out when he was in high school or like in that time frame. And he and his buddies would go into the theater and they especially it came out around this time of year where there was the shamrock shakes oh God. and they would go up into the upper oh. bel- upper balcony of the heights your theater. dad is terrible <laughs> but that's funny <laughs> well, that's not even that's not even the worst things that he's done but i'll save this for offer <laughs> <laughs> okay he was the troublemaker and so you know sounds like it mm-hmm. i didn't learn any sarcasm nope <laughs> nope no, I didn't learn nope. any of that from my daddy there, that's for sure. Nope. Um, so she says uh, that the woman will be removed. The guys, the, the team members will get bowls out and then the woman will have to be forcibly removed because she does not want to go. But she said Richard wants to go. Like yeah, he'll he be easy to, to move on. He wants mm-hmm. to move on. But yeah, then, she's like, no, I don't want to go. Yeah. Like, bitch, got to go. Bitch, got to go. And then um, Krista has the best quote. Before that, yeah. though, Steve says, well, I was going to ask if you're going to take Amy's oh. advice, but that feels like a stupid yeah. question. And Michael goes, yeah, don't even bother yeah. asking. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that would have been the time that it will say, um, they couldn't find a Reiki master. And so they're not. Yeah. Getting, <laughs> that's always how that works. They're like, oh, of course we are. Of course we are. But no. So, yeah, I just want to mention uh, Krista's great line. Her line was yeah. great. I didn't survive cancer to be taken up by this lady. Yep. Yep. Good on you, girl. And then they cut two months oh, later. This was so, and I loved, so they do a video update. Yep. Um, everything's good. They said the difference in our life is like night and day. And the thing that made me happiest was Michael Anthony yep. was in the video with his fiance. Yep. And he mm-hmm. talked. He talked and he, he said, was like, it's he night said and day. How like, their lives life have changing. changed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, that made me feel really happy. That made me so happy. See, this is this is the kind of thing that we are missing when the show does not return. But then we see some of the other crap that we've seen over the time and heard from some of the clients that it happened yeah. to. Yeah, that you know gives you that like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But so glad that that this happened. That they got the stuff that they needed mm-hmm. taken care yeah. of. That you could just tell they were all lighter. They were all smiling. You could, I mean, you could just tell the difference. They read their script they really read the well. Script. <laughs> they practiced in front of mirrors. They're all life changing. No, no, hold it back. Hold it back. Greg it's thinks. life changing. No, need them more. They need more. So they really did practice. But no, it, no, was, it was good. It was good to see that. Yeah. It made me really happy. Yeah. Because I was nervous there, Amy, when he was like, no, you don't, you don't even have to bother asking yeah. us that question. I'm like, oh, please. 
But Amy, Amy said it was her team coming in. Yeah. So I had a lot more faith mm-hmm. that yeah. it was. And I think that she would prefer to have always been able to offer up the spirit mechanics to do this. But, you know, it was it, right after this aired, it was COVID and they mm-hmm. were busy. They couldn't do it there, you know, and mm-hmm. so I think they got backlogged. At least that's what I heard yep. is that mm-hmm. they got really backlogged. Um, by the way, if anybody who's on Spirit Mechanics team is listening to this, we would love for you to come on the show. We would love to hear about what you do and yes. your different, uh, different cases that you've done because, you know, I've done a lot of them. And we'd pretty, love, pretty, love, love, love to hear that. Pretty, pretty, please. With sugar on top. Yeah. Okay. So that was super fun. That was good. I, this was, was a was really good episode. We've had a couple good, we have. interesting episodes in in the last few yeah. years. Yeah. It's been good. It has. Well, all right. Thank you for joining us, everybody. We really, really appreciate it. Next week is our last spring break recap. We'll be in New Orleans. I think that's how you say it. I New Orleans. I'm totally New Orleans. New Orleans. Um, it is called Deadly Vessel. It was season eleven, episode seven. And it originally aired August 21st, 2019. So stay tuned for that. Watch it between now and next week if you want to follow along with us or not. I mean, that's or if you remember it. I I don't remember it. I I don't know. I remember a lot of things. I don't remember this. I don't (laughs) steal trap. Yep. Colander. Um, So, yeah. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to the Activity Continues podcast. We really appreciate you giving us your ears for a bit. Please reach out if you have a spooky story you'd like us to share on the show. We can be reached at the Activity Continues at gmail.com or through our website or any of our socials. Links are all in the description of the show. Please feel free to drop us a note and say hi. And join us next time when the activity continues. The Activity Continues is produced by me, Amy, at Collected Sounds Media and is part of the independent Collected Sounds Podcast Network. We are also proud members of the BooPod Network of Super Cool Podcasts. Nailed it.